Uh, we need to get subscribe and get this unity stronger and beat YouTube at their own game. Okay, that's what this is about. Like I say, go to the remix button, hit the remix button. That way you'll have this video and, and keep up with this. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us, guys, and it's, it's really bad. Okay, guys, I'm uh, going to attempt to do this in one hit. Um, so, excuse any slight hiccups or whatever. Uh, right, we're on uh, Nuclear News. Um, now, I've been posting on here. Uh, I've had a little break from uh, YouTube, as you can tell. Um, and uh, there's some information that's come up. I was just going to run through it quickly. Just a couple of main parts. Uh, the first part is to do with the uh, European uh, petition to uh, challenge the ICRP, which is the uh, radiation dose uh, sort of estimate um, uh, group. Uh, who say that it's okay for children to have 100 millisieverts per year in Japan. So anyway, Buzz, Christopher Busby's uh, fronting this, and uh, he's basically um, uh, got the first tranche of uh, petitions through. Uh, people have sent in the petitions to Brussels that is uh, in his, uh, his ICNJ website. So... Um, I've been posting the videos and giving updates on what's been happening. Um, the latest one you're looking at at the moment is latest video uh, um, uh, explaining what's happening with it. Um, and uh, of course I've reposted this and I also reposted the petition as well, if I can show you that. Uh, the petition is, as you scroll down, so that first video is his latest video is talking 2013 this year and last year was when we um, uh, were doing this uh, petition and getting that out there's some description there of people who are behind this petition like the world the alternative wealth organ uh, health organization um, and uh, this is just a comment there and a little extract from their website um, there's a link to their website so you can find out who those guys are they're, they're, they're European uh, scientists and professionals that uh, uh, think that the World Health Organization, uh, the formal one, is uh, is not doing its job uh, and is unable to do its job because the IAEA and the people behind them are actually stopping any meaningful research um, or uh, inquiry into uh, radiological issues. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> we've got some names there um, of people who are involved. Um, I think you can see those. Yes, you should be able to. Um, I'm going to leave a link for all this anyway. Um, I also put uh, Professor Yablokov's uh, video just, to, just there for some explanation. Uh, some other bits and bobs there I put just to, to uh, boost the issue that, th that this does need challenging. We need to have a conversation about this in court. And, uh, and obviously that's uh, what... Uh, all these professionals do, uh, headed by uh, Professor Busby. Right, we'll get to this video here, and uh, this has been posted up a few times on Nuclear News, and it's been posted up all over the web. Uh, the, um, the, the video itself, uh, people who are trying to post this up, like myself and Miss Milky One, and uh, Miss Milky the Clan One, and uh, various other people, uh, were having great problems uploading this video when it first came out and uh, when you go out you'll, you'll find that some of us have got two or three copies of this video because the first video nobody could get to it um, but uh, but anyway we, we got it out there and 500 people uh, basically uh, sent in these petitions so that was a good effort not a bad effort uh, considering uh, the there, there was uh, a difficulty shall we say in uh, in marketing this video and the message that it was bringing. So uh, we've got an address there. That's that's where you send your, uh, you know, if you're European, you've got a European passport. You need to do this, all right? But anyway, that's what I was saying. But um, of course, I've I've just said, you know, go and do it. So oh, let's let's go to the website. Mm, we can click on the ICNJ website here. I think you can just see that in the top left hand corner. So that's uh, nuclearjustice.org. Uh, and if we were to click on that, uh, what would we get? Off. www nuclear. Oh, I'll just uh, let you see the URL there, so I don't think you see that. But uh, just up here, www nuclearjustice.org. 
And then when we get there, we get welcome to your website, it says. This is a default index page of your website. I'll just click that off so you may be able to see that easier. <coughs> Move that over that way a bit. Um, this file may be deleted or overwritten without any difficulty. This is a product. This is produced by the file index.html in the web directory. For questions or problems, please contact support. <coughs> so they very kindly left a message saying that uh, the file can be easily deleted or overwritten uh, without any difficulty whatsoever. <laughs> and uh, this is powered by ISP config. Let's just find out who they are because I think we should consider banging, banning them from, from uh, uh, who are they? Uh, just a quick look, quick look. I'm going to keep this short. No information about them. Just... Uh, no home, no information. What's down here? Imprint. No, thank you. All right. Well, anyway, so that's uh, that's a problem. So you can't actually send your your thing out, can you? Um, and anyway, if you're wondering why why Busby would be under attack now, this is ridiculous, isn't it? Total paranoia. Uh, well, I'm just going to bring you to a couple of other little situations that have occurred. So if I just adjust this, there we go. Um, I'm going to go through this fairly quickly. Right, to start off with, uh, there was uh, some stories about uh, the cellar field being evacuated and gas masks having to be worn. And uh, then the BBC covered it and said, oh, it was the snow. And um, this whole story here, I'm going to leave a link to it and just got to read it. Um, it's, it's got quite involved. But bottom line is they were lying. They were lying. Eurodep uh, did a switch off while I was trying to get the information. Managed to get the information anyway because of the little tricks that uh, I've been using on these other YouTube videos. Uh, the little back doors that they leave open for us. Um, and so <coughs> we were look I was looking at things. And, um, you know, as I was looking around uh, the United Kingdom, we, we were getting some little bits. And then there was a switch off uh, about 12 o'clock on March the 22nd. And uh, in Ireland, there wasn't a switch off, but we can see some strange things going on. And um, I'm just going to leave these, these links here. I'm just going to let you have a quick look at them. This is all over Ireland has been hit by radon. Now, we know that these, these little rises are actually representative of big, quick peaks and then averaging out software. So we get a kind of a straight line, especially in the UK. Um, and what's probably been happening is we'd maybe be getting up to 0.2 something, maybe a bit more. Um, in fact, um, well, I'm going to let you know, sort of decide what you think that might be. Um, but it was quite interesting, and that happened. And I just reported on it, and I said, well, no, it isn't uh, the snow. It's a radon uh, uh, issue, and it uh, went out uh, to the Atlantic, spread all over Ireland. It's hit Spain, where they turned off the, the radiation monitoring on your Um Yeah, total nightmare. Loads of links there. I've left some other links there that show Portugal being switched off. And um, yeah, you just got to have a look at it. Malinhead. Uh, Cork got hit very heavily because that got hit from as, as the... Um, contamination went out to sea it came back and then it hit the south coast of Ireland uh, and then went across Ireland uh, and I think that's what might have happened I also think there was some coastal stuff that was triggering off the coast coastal stuff as well but look at those yourself um, because you know if uh, uh, you guys that have been doing this for a while that you'd, you'd, you'd have an idea of how to click around your depth and uh, <clears throat> right okay I'm just going to quickly go on to the next one um, and this was the same story. A couple of days later, there's a radiation alert at a dead, you know, the dead tycoon. You know, uh, they called in the radio, uh, radiological, and they eventually said, oh, it was, um, it's just normal atmospheric. They said normal atmospheric, and of course, going back to that, it wasn't too normal, was it? It wasn't too normal. It was radon from Sellafield, and the workers had to evacuate, and uh, young children in the local area. Well, I'll come to that soon. Anyway, so well, I put a UFO there because um, that was just taking the mic, basically. You know, just add to the uh, non-story. Okay, so we've uh, basically had a look at that, and this is another non-story that occurred. And uh, <clears throat> we've got Telegraph. Very, it's covered all, all the major media. 
great story. It, they just turned it into a political fiasco, uh, uh, which didn't involve telling the Irish that they polluted the whole of the sort of kind of Western Europe with radiation. Uh, but it's radon from the vitrification processes, I think, in, uh, in Sellafield. I know it's Sellafield. I think it's vitrification. Um, and that they're much more smellier than, uh, say, nuclear power stations. Uh, nuclear power stations are quite clean. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, going back to 20th of October 2012, an uh, article in the Daily Mail uh, referred to birds dropping out of the sky uh, and a UFO. And uh, I don't know if you can see it here, but um, just around here, there's a rather large circular, and it's not you can't even see through it. So it's like a flat circle of uh, gases. And of course, we know this is ionizing radiation. It's radon. Uh, it's got God knows what else in it, but it's certainly got radon in it. And it's very dense because we can't see through it. So it's dense. It's a very thick, tight smoke. And we know that this is going to spread as it travels. And, uh, you know, I'll be reading that in, in uh, oh, I did actually, I think I left a link to it. Yeah, I got up to 0.25 microsieverts uh, <coughs> uh, per hour on Friday and then on the Saturday it started reducing 0.15 from that but I would imagine there was more of those about don't you that, that was just a um, uh, um, what do you call it um, it was a, a, a stack uh, fire or a backdraft you know basically there was a fire possibly in the stack blew up this thing you know made a smoke ring for want of a better of a word and, and and they got a nice picture of it um, but uh, maybe they thought it was a UFO, but well, yeah, it's, um, <laughs> yeah, that's how, that's what censorship does, by the way, you know, is it's a UFO, major national daily, uh, it's not, can uh, you know, it's, it's not cancerous radiation or anything, don't worry about it, uh, but anyway, I, I've talked about <clears throat> what radon does to our environment uh, when it's man-made like this, and that it turns to lead, and that it poisons our birds, as in last year's uh, report about bird deaths and uh, the high levels of lead, and where is it coming from? Well, it's coming from, well, there's a picture of it. You've got a picture of where the lead's coming from. That is lead. Well, it will be. It's amazing, isn't it? It's like magic. It turns into a gas, and then it turns into a, a particulate, and eventually it becomes, actually, do you know what? Eventually, the lead that the, that's in the birds will eventually become polonium. Hang on, polonium-210. Polonium-210 is exactly what the lead-210 that's in the birds will become. And that'll be in all our environment. So, you know, that's, that's food for thought. No terrible health effect. So, um, right, so I did all that. And then I'll just go into this one. So there we are, we're talking about huge releases from places like The Hog and Sellafield and they're just massive and they're covering it up and because they're covering it up, well, we'll go on to that. But at the moment, you know, we're getting reports from nuclear um, sites that there's birth defects, stillbirth, spontaneous abortions, all that type of stuff. Um, and that was from India. So I'm going to leave a link to that and you can read that and then think, well, if they're talking about nuclear power stations that are relatively clean, what about nuclear fuel processing and waste uh, disposal sites that are producing huge amounts, you know, that they, they don't want to even measure? They'll turn the monitors off uh, while these releases are going on, turn them back on afterwards and then claim uh, they've, they've only had so many uh, million becquerels release a year when they've had a lot more than that. So anyway, but this is one article there uh, from India claiming that and of course a lot of you are saying well no <clears throat> that's a load of rubbish in India we don't believe well they're, they're no good at that and they you know but they're, they're, they're good enough to run nuclear power plants and have bombs um, study shows radiation can be bad for a women's heart I just thought I'd pop that one in there just to you know and uh, you can have a look at that yourself uh, we've got uh, where we've got yeah it's just a good article there and uh, you can have a look at that um, and then I think there is this, which I just thought I'd pop in just for the crack. Most Americans are willing to use nuclear weapons, new report. I'll just leave that down the bottom there. Um, 
It's just food for thought. You know, when we're considering that if they're prepared to use nuclear weapons, then they're, they're not really worried about a bit of raid on, you know what I'm saying? So um, that's that one. Uh, oof, right, okay. And then uh, the very last one should be... I can never find it. Ah, good grief. Right. Ah, there we are. Irish bid to close Sutherfield. So basically a couple of days after the well actually to be honest the the seller field release has been going on for weeks at least a week or so that i'm aware of all right i haven't been looking too closely at it i just picked up on it when this report came out so <clears throat> this particular article which i'm going to leave for you you can read it yourself you can go to the links you can check out um, uh, the documentation uh, that's with it and um, you know at the bottom here we've got some other links uh, as well and in fact, there's a link here on any news, which I put a load of links and other people have. And um, it's just interesting. It's just just making fun of the mainstream media and how they really cannot or they are unable. They are not allowed to cover a story in this way. Uh, but uh, one of them did. And uh, so therefore, we've got uh, the Irish bid to close Sellafield two days after uh, the report um, of uh, bad weather at Sellafield, shall we say? Uh, but but we know what that was. Um, and and you know, the, obviously the Irish, they they're looking at how much cesium it's putting out. So there's a map there showing you how the cesium is deposited around uh, into the report. I just I pulled up an extract, but it's giving you uh, you know. So I think this is a uh, tritium uh, uh, depositions in the Irish Sea. Um, anybody want some Dublin prawns? Crack on. They they were nice. Um, Ah, I've just noticed that the that isn't live, but you can cut and paste it and move on. Um, but that's the actual, you know, the, the, we've got the links there to the actual Irish uh, reports uh, done by scientists. Uh, you can have a look at that. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, that's for you to read. There's some good articles there, and uh, you know, at the end of the day, um, this was covered by the Daily Mail. Um, not very wide uh, coverage otherwise um, so well done Daily Mail um, because it's quite important see what's happened is I'll just finish off with this th thought for you Chris Busby who got hacked um, brought up the fact that Ireland has an agreement with England and England has to tell them how much release they are doing and if they break the terms of that agreement then the Irish can uh, say, well, we don't agree with Sellafield, you have to close it down. And they go to the European law, and then Sellafield has to close down. And uh, that is some of the worst news for the British nuclear crowd that we've ever come across. Uh, major layoffs in the nuclear industry coming up, um, lots of bad news. Um, I just hope they keep some good lads uh, for decommissioning, you know. Um, but 70% uh, of the workers are going to be you know, the, the uh, sort of more highly trained, highly educated workers will be leaving. Um, and we're going to have a lot of untrained young people who started engineering at the age of some silly age, like 22, 25. And they're the people that are going to be, uh, be um, going to be dealing with these elderly reactors, um, which um, don't seem to retire as quick as the workers that work in them. Anyway, God bless all. Links below. And I'll talk to you soon. I'm talking you to, to you today on Hiroshima Day about the question of human rights, science and the law. And in this I'm representing a new committee called the International Committee on Nuclear Justice, which was launched in Vilnius uh, in December 2011 and later was added to by people from Geneva in May 2012. The purpose of this committee is to carry out and research um, legal avenues of preventing the continuing contamination of the environment by the nuclear industry and by weapons usage. And the first thing that, that we are launching today is um, a petition to the European Parliament which is based on human rights legislation and it's based on the fact that there is an enormous amount of information available now, uh, peer-reviewed literature, scientific papers which show that the contamination of the environment is causing the deaths of millions of people. 
And up till now, nobody has really thought about ways in which they can legally stop the nuclear industry and the um, military from continuing to contaminate the environment, because whenever they try to do this, activists and NGOs, and there are enough of those, and I'm talking to you all now, they get blocked by the argument that the risk model, the International Commission on Radiological Protection risk model, shows that these contaminations are safe and cannot possibly harm anybody. But there is now enough evidence to show that this is wrong. Scientific evidence in the peer review literature. And in the document that I should be sending you, and which you can find on the website of the International Com Committee on Nuclear Justice, which is nuclearjustice.org, you will find this document, which is a template for a petition to the European Parliament, which I will now explain. Now, this actually only applies to people who live in the states of the European Union. And later on, we will be dealing with people who live in other countries, like Japan and the United States, countries which have signed up to various international conventions on human rights. And we will be using human rights legislation. But for now, the first um, launch of this uh, Petition, this idea will be through a petition to the Petitions Committee of the European Parliament, which I will now explain. You will find this petition uh, on the website, as I said, of the International Commission on Nuclear Justice. And what I want you to do is to download the petition and to sign it. And if you like to add to it anything that you, you have that concerns you about the particular situation in your country, um, about nuclear industry, about contamination, possibly about child health, whatever it happens to be that, that is your concern, add that to the petition, sign it, and send it by registered post to the Petitions Committee of the European Parliament at Rouvierts in Brussels, and we'll put the address up for you to do this. Now, I talked about this in Geneva, and I said there, when people were concerned about what could be done, that there was something that could be done. And if you all do this, it will cause a tsunami of petitions to appear. In August, and this is important because in August the, the European Parliament is in recess and, and these petitions will have to just build up in the Petitions Committee and they will have to deal with them. And the reason that they will have to deal with them is this, that the petition is based on the present European Parliament, the present, the present European law, which is a directive uh, uh, based on the Euratom Treaty it's the Euratom 9629 Directive, which is called the Basic Safety Standards Directive. Inside this directive is a clause, and I'll show you the clause here, it's, it's written down, uh, under, under Chapter 5, Justification and Regulatory Control of Practices, and we're talking about practices involving the release of radioactivity to the environment, Article 20 says, Existing types of practices shall be reviewed as to their justification whenever new and important evidence about their efficacy or potential consequences is acquired. Now this is a terribly important clause because what it means is that all of the practices, that's every situation where radioactivity is released to the environment, has to be reconsidered on the basis of evidence that shows that the risk model that is currently being used to address this practice, and this is the risk model of the ICRP, if it shows that this risk model is wrong or raises questions about its safety, then these practices have to be re-justified. And this petition will force that to come about because it is law. So it's not just a question of complaining to your MP, it's not just a question of writing something saying, oh, I don't like this on some vast tsunami of postcards that go to somebody who just puts them in the bin. This is a legal process which has to be dealt with and they will have to deal with it. But only if you send the petition along. Now let me explain what this is about. Under, under um, international human rights agreements and legislations, there are various clauses which say that each person is entitled to live in an environment which is safe for their health. This has been universally signed up to by every single country in the world, and certainly by the European Union. Now the problem is that people who live environments that, in environments that are contaminated with radioactivity are not living in an environment which is safe for their health. And so this is a contravention of an international human rights legislation agreement. And the only reason that they can say, this is the, the, this is the European Union, the Commission, 
in this particular case, that these things are harmless, is they can say that the International Commission on Radiological Protection says that, 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 these, that the doses that are associated with these exposures are too low to cause any effects. But in this petition, at the end of it, we have gathered together 55 peer-reviewed references, each of which, on its own, shows that the ICRP risk model is false. And not false by a very small amount, but false by a very, very large amount, so that thousands of people are dying, no, millions of people are dying as a result of these exposures. People living along the shores of the Baltic Sea, people who are living along the shores of the Irish Sea, children who are leaving, living near nuclear installations. There's a long, long list. People in Iraq that have been exposed to radioactivity from uranium. I'll just go through a few of these because I don't want to hold you too long. The most important thing is this take-home message. You must get this petition, download it, and assign it and send it to the European Parliament at the address that we'll give you. So I'll just go briefly through some of the evidences, and they're all backed up by peer-reviewed studies. Firstly, there's childhood cancer near nuclear installations. An enormous number of studies have shown that if you live within five kilometers of a nuclear power station, your children have double the risk of getting childhood leukemia. There's no question about this. The radiation causes the childhood leukemia, and yet, the ICRP risk model says that this is impossible. And the, the error in the model needed to account for these childhood leukemias, and the latest study is an enormous study from the German government. The error necessary to explain this is upwards of a thousand times. So in other words, the risk model of the ICRP is wrong by at least one thousand times in terms of, with regard to this particular situation. And now also here's another thing there was an increase in infant leukemia after Chernobyl in those children who were in the womb at the time of the Chernobyl radiation. So it could only be the Chernobyl radiation that caused the increase in infant leukemia. And the, these uh, uh, studies were done in a number of different epidemiological settings, in Greece, in Germany, in the United Kingdom, in the United States, in Belarus. Wherever anybody looked, they found increases in infant leukemia in these children who were in the womb. And that shows an error in the ICRP risk model of about 400 times. Then there was a study in northern Sweden by Martin Tondell uh, that showed that people who lived in areas contaminated with cesium from Chernobyl had, had cancer rates proportional to the amount of contamination. This was published in the peer review literature. It's there for anyone to see. It shows that the error in the ICRP risk model is about 600 times. A very important study now is one by Hagen Scherb, in Germany, and he looked at, the, and his colleague Christina Voigt looked at the sex ratio, that's the ratio of boys to girls, who were born after particular accidents like Chernobyl, after the weapons testing fallout, and living near nuclear power stations, and he found that there was a perturbation in the sex ratio, quite clear, highly statistically significant, published in the peer review literature. It means that millions of children have died. Millions of children have died as a result of these exposures to, 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 to ionizing radiation. Shows another, that shows a problem with the ICRP risk model of hundreds of times, thousands of times. In fact, the ICRP risk model doesn't even consider the effects on, on, on infant mortality and, ch and children. So, we have cancer and, and leukemia, lymphoma and heart disease in uranium workers. Very recent study by Irina Gusevacano. In, in, who works for the French nuclear industry, incidentally. So not somebody from the, if you like, the lefty side, somebody who works for the industry. Very clever epidemiologist has studied uranium workers and shown that they have a huge increase in heart, heart disease effects and in cancer, in leukemia and lymphoma. This shows that the ICRP risk model is out by a factor of 2,400 times in the peer review literature. Various other things. I won't go through all of them. They're all on the end of this report. I'll just finally mention, of course, the work done by my colleague Alexey Yablokov, who collected together all of the information that came out from the ex-Soviet Union territories contaminated by Chernobyl, and showed that there were enormous health disaster effects in, in Belarus, in uh, Ukraine, in, in those parts of the Russian Federation that were exposed to the Chernobyl effects in Bryansk. There is just so much evidence, we have an embarrassment of riches, but the problem is that nobody will look at it. Well, we're going to force them to look at it by sending this petition to the European Parliament Petitions Committee.
with all of its 55 references and you are going to help us to do this by contacting us at info at nuclearjustice.org uh, or else just going to the website and downloading the, the uh, information and I hope that you will contact us and tell us that you're doing it so we'll have a sort of a list of the number of people who have helped us in this way. For the first time we can probably make a difference. We can probably really stop the nuclear industry from, for, from continuing to pollute. And, and I don't blame these people. I have to say that we're, we're not talking about bad guys and good guys here, although actually there are some bad guys. I think in general we're talking about ignorance and uh, people who are tied into a sort of culture of physics and a culture of the past, a culture of a risk model that was set up in 1952 and hasn't really been altered since then. And so we have to forgive these people for what they've done, but we cannot continue to allow them to do it. Thank you.